So the question over here is which condition is depicted in the CT picture given below. So what we are seeing in this CT scan is globular masses which are radio dense on the lingual surface that is the lingual surface over here so we, are, we can presume that this could be the tongue because over here you can see that the bone over here appears to be more like the mandible rather than the maxilla because for the maxilla you would see that the prop, a proper radio opaque structure throughout so this appears to be the mandible you have globular structures which are white that is radio opaque and they are seen on the lingual surface of the mandible and they seem to be in the region of the premolars incisors canines premolars and these are your molars so the question is probably talking about mandibular tori and that could be the answer over here yes so what are tori tori are basically what we call exostosis exostosis means that they are bony overgrowths the etiology for these are unknown idiopathic that is however a lot of people think that it is genetic in nature according to a few periodontists they could also be in response to tfo however the answer to this is inconclusive they are hamartomas this is another important this is something that you need to remember that means they are normal tissue that is growing at a different rate compared to the no uh, for example the tissue that is present over there it is not malignant per se but it is its growth is rapid as compared to the no tissues that are there surrounding this tissue over here so uh, they are commonly seen over here in ma mandibular tori they are commonly seen in mongoloids this is an important mcq as well this is more commonly it would be asked in ini cet okay and uh, they are seen above the mylohyoid line in the premolar region females are more commonly affected than males in the ratio of 2 is to 1 uh one more thing that we need to remember about these are differential diagnosis for this is osteomas also what is the main reason why these uh, tori are important for us is when you have a edentulous patient who's come to you these can act as fulcrums both the maxillary as well as mandibular tori can act as fulcrums where the tensure can wobble in order in addition to that the mucosa that is present over the tori is extremely thin and because of this thin mucosa the mucosa gets ulcerated very easily because of the irritation of the denture so what we do in most cases is either we relieve the area or we have to remove the torus completely if we have to remove the torus then we have to undergo a surgical procedure and uh, we give an incision we raise a flap after raising the flap we use your bone and we either use a chisel and a hammer mallet sorry or we use a burr and we remove the exostosis that is present over here so what we see over here in this region this is the maxillary torus that is the torus palatinus this is your torus mandibularis or the mandibular tori what you see over here is complex odontome these are radio opaque structures which are present they cannot be particularly defined as tooth like structures because compound odontome looks more like tooth like structures so they have a peripheral radio lucency surrounding the radio opaque structures these are what you call as siloliths and it, one more important mcq was 20 to 40 percent of the siloliths are radio lucent they are concentric structures which are radio opaque and can be easily detected on silography as well as on normal radiographs wherein you make you take an occlusal projection 
for man palatine tourists that is tourist palatinus they can be classified into four types based on the shape which is spindle shaped lobular nodular and lastly they can be flat Torus palatinus can is present in the midline of the hard palate. It can sometimes extend all the way up to the soft palate. We need to remember that this is a very important question. Mandibular tori or rather tori in general have been asked in multiple MCQs and they have been repeatedly, you know, it's a favorite for the examiners. They can twist and twirl the question in multiple ways. For all you know, what they could just say is, a hematomatous lesion which is seen in the midline of the palate which can cause problems in denture fabrication so the, over here you can say that it is a torus palatinus they could even ask bony overgrowths that are present above the mylohyoid line in the region of the premolars is torus mandibularis also they could say a, a bone like structure which is seen on the history they could just give you a histological picture of bone and they could just say bone like structures we seen under the microscope which are seen in the mandibular region lingual surface of the mandible above the mylohyoid line in the premolar region again your answer will be torus mandibularis